What is up everybody? Jay Nell here with my UFC 183 prediction video. I'm super excited. Let's get into it. First on the prelims, I'm choosing Sarah McMahon to beat Misha Tate. Now onto the main card. I am choosing Jordan Mean to beat Thiago Alves. I'm choosing Thales Leites to beat Tim Boach. Now Joe Lozon versus Al Iaquinta. Don't sleep. This one could still fight of the night. Al is known to fight up to his competition and Joe has, I don't know how many fight bonuses. The, um, Al is a wrestler first. He chains up there with um, Matt Serra and I believe with the champ Chris Weidman up in New York. And while we know Joe Lozon, submission grappler, totally tricky, very smart, sells out to try to get that submission, puts his own body at risk to get some. This is a toss up. I don't know who to choose. I'm picking Joe Lozon just because high risk, high reward. He takes risks. So I'm going to bank on that and choosing Joe Lozon. Next up, co-main event. And we have Tyron Woodley, the number three, taking on the number seven, Kelvin Gastelum. And as you guys know, I love me some Kelvin Gastelum. He is one to watch. 23 years old. Been watching him since the Ultimate Fighter. He is a sponge. He's improving so quickly. We see a different fighter every time he hits the octagon. It's quite amazing. This is his biggest test to date, the number three, like I said. I was saying that if he keeps on this upward trajectory, we might see him giving a title shot somewhere uh, early next year. But with Robbie taking a break, we know that um, Matt Brown is fighting Hendricks. We know that McDonald's fighting Lombard. So who knows what will happen if Kelvin actually pulls this off. Now, they're both wrestlers first. I don't know who's going to be stronger. They both have good cardio, even though Tyron has been suspect in the past with his cardio. But in his last few, few fights, it seems like he's gotten past that. I do believe Tyron will be faster. So if it stays on the feet for how long, I think he'll have a little bit of an advantage just because he'll be quicker to the punch as far as who's the better striker, who's the better boxer. Again, with the rate that Kelvin is improving, it's really hard to predict how good he'll be. He's a different fighter every time you see him. Strong chin, uh, durable. I, I, I don't know. I'm totally excited for this fight, which could also sneak and still fight of the night. I'm going with my boy Kelvin, but I do think I'm taking a risk in choosing him, so I will not be surpri surprised if Tyron gets this. Totally excited for this co-main event. Now, not as excited as I am for the main event, which is the return of the champ, the king, even though he's not the actual king, but the king, <laughs> Anderson, the spider, Silva, against Nick Diaz. Now, Nick has actually asked for this fight before. Uh, he's, you know, Nick asked for every fight that he thinks he deserves. He should get, but he's getting it now. Lots of questions here. Real quick, they're still, their skill sets, they're both Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belts. Nick from uh, Gracie himself. Nick is a very, very proficient boxer. He's got hands. I wish he's a little bit flat-footed like his brother. I wish his feet were as good as his hands were but he's got hands, cumulative damage. He's not a power puncher, but he does hit hard and he does possess knockout power. He's just not a power puncher. Again, combinations though. He's going to outstrike Anderson Silva, the man. Talk about offense, pressure, durable, can take a hit. When he sees his own blood, it gets him excited, even more willing to fight. So this is an interesting fight. He's not one that's going to be put away real quickly. Now, of course, Anderson Silva, as we know, Again, he started off with Taekwondo. He's also a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He's fallen in love with the Muay Thai. And he's just his accuracy, pinpoint accuracy. Strong, spectacular, dynamic. You don't know what he's going to hit you with next. Coming off of two losses, the last being an injury, a broken leg, which was one of the most horrible leg injuries I've ever seen. However, it was a very clean break. So medically, that's why he was able to come back so quickly after just a year and at 39 years old. What Anderson Silva are we going to see? Are we going to see the old Anderson Silva? How is that leg going to going to hold up after being broken like that after a year off? Now he's a fighter. He's more durable than you and I, but that's the big question mark. What kind of shape is Anderson Silva going to be in? If he's in the, the normal shape, his leg kicks, he can take apart Nick's lead leg and possibly finish him, win a decision. Either way, Dana White says if he wins, he gets his third title shot against Chris Weidman. So high stakes here. I love the drama. If this man were to go out like this after winning two losses in a row, after having the belt for seven years, and comes back, wins his first fight, and gets back to the title hunt, the drama, the story, I love it. So I'm going with Anderson Silva. 
but I think this entire event's going to be spectacular. Let me know your picks, any injury updates. Friend me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter. Tick, talk to me. Take care, talk to me. Let me know your picks, because I'm so excited for this. It's next week. Talk to me. Take care, and goodbye.